guys welcome back i am dr sirbi and in this lecture i will be discussing bacterial vaginosis so bacterial vaginosis as the name suggests is a bacterial vaginal infection and it commonly occurs in women of child bearing age so far no specific bacteria have been implicated in causing bacterial vaginosis and actually it is a shift of the normal lactobacillus to other bacteria so what's the mechanism there's a decrease in the number of normal number of lactobacilli that leads to a decrease in the amount of lactic acid production so the acid production that is the lactic acid production will decrease also there will be a decrease in the hydrogen peroxide production thus contributing decrease in the acid production will contribute to increase in the vaginal th and thus leading to the overgrowth of gardnerella vaginalis or the anaerobes so there will be decrease in the lactobacilli thus causing decrease in lactic acid production and decrease in the hydrogen peroxide production causing an increase that in the vaginal ph and thus overgrowth of anaerobic bacteria like gardnerella vaginalis mycoplasma hominis bacteroides anaerobes like streptococcus mobinculus and prevetola etc so as said no specific bacteria have been implicated in causing bacterial vaginosis rather it seems to be a shift of the normal lactobacillus flora to mixed vaginal infection uh, caused by anaerobic flora including the gardnerella vaginalis bacteroides species and mobinculus species the importance of bacterial vaginosis with respect to women's health is emphasized why because of its association between the pelvic inflammatory diseases so there is an association between bacterial vaginosis and pelvic inflammatory diseases it's also associated with adverse outcomes of pregnancy and higher chances of postpartum endometritis so therefore appropriate diagnosis and treatment of bacterial vaginosis is very important okay so bacterial vaginosis it's the most common cause of abnormal vaginal odor and discharge caused by overgrowth of anaerobic species like gardnerella vaginalis mycoplasma species anaerobic species like mobinculus peptostreptococcus prevetola etc and uh, has been associated with adverse outcomes if it occurs in pregnancy and high chances of postpartum endometritis also there is increased risk of development of pelvic inflammatory diseases all right now most commonly bacterial vaginosis it occurs because of overgrowth of gardnerella vaginalis in the vagina gardnerella vaginalis is a gram variable bacteria that is the gram stain it varies it varies but ultimately it is deemed as gram positive right ultimately it is deemed as gram positive but it is actually a gram variable bacteria now gardnerella vaginalis is an anaerobic pleomorphic bacillus which overgrows in the vagina leading to a foul smelling foul smelling thin gray white discharge all right now ansel et al proposed a set of practical diagnostic criteria for the cl clinical diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis that is now accepted as the gold standard criteria this is the gold standard criteria for a diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis three out of the four criteria should be uh, there for the uh, for meeting the uh, diagnosis of bacterial vaginosis so what are the four criteria first is the presence of a thin homogeneous adherent uh, white discharge second is a positive whiff test right that is uh, a fishy amine odor occurs after addition of potassium hydroxide right third is the presence of clue cells and fourth is the vaginal ph more than 4.5 so 
repeating again, three out of the four criteria must be met to establish the diagnosis and it establishes an accurate diagnosis in 90% of the affected women. So it is a highly uh, specific criteria, right? So again, repeating the criteria, thin, watery, adherent, right discharge, uh, WIF test which is positive, that is a fishy odor uh, on addition of potassium hydroxide, presence of clue cells on microscopy and a vaginal pH more than 4.5. Now remember that the pH measurements of the vaginal discharge, they very well help in diagnosing the cause of the vaginal infection. If there is presence of a whitish discharge, so we do the vaginal pH. Okay, we do the vaginal pH. If the pH is normal, that is, it is between 3.8 to 4.5, then it is indicative of a candidal infection. Right, but if the pH is altered, that is, the pH is more than 4.5, then it is indicative of either the trichomoniasis or bacterial vaginosis all right so vaginal ph more than 4.5 is suggestive of either of the two infections trichomoniasis or bacterial vaginosis in bacterial vaginosis ph is more than 4.5 that is as i have explained because of decreased in the lactic acid production which was earlier being produced by the lactobacilli all right now secondly the whiff test the positive whiff test so a whiff test is performed by addition of several drops of potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide or KOH is added in concentration of 10%. Few drops of uh, this potassium hydroxide is added to the vaginal discharge. All right. A strong fishy odor is indicative of a positive test result. So, a mean odor or a fishy odor that is produced by adding 10% potassium hydroxide to the vaginal discharge is indicative of a positive whiff test. Also remember the fishy odor it is also always present but it will only increase in amount when potassium hydroxide is added. So fishy odor is characteristic for bacterial vaginosis that is because of the anaerobes that are there that will increase on addition of KOH and that is uh, the positive whiff test. Now third is the clue cells. When you prepare a wet mount, that is a slide for microscopy examination, you will notice the characteristic clue cells. That is, under a microscope, clue cells, which are basically the vaginal epithelial cells that are covered by bacteria, they are seen. Here you should remember that the anaerobic bacteria invades the stratified squamous epithelium of the vagina that is non-keratinized and under a microscope it is seen as clue cells. So the non-keratinized non vaginal epithelium it is invaded by the bacteria and this invaded bacteria seen inside the uh, vaginal epithelial cell as seen here uh, it is called as a clue cell in the right figure also you can see that the loaded uh, vaginal epithelial cell is a clue cell while the normal one normal epithelial cell is not loaded by the bacteria so you can note the characteristic difference of the clue cells from the normal normal vaginal epithelial cells which are not invaded by the bacteria here again you can see a uh, clue cell that is the vaginal epithelial cell that is loaded with the or invaded by the bacteria. Now let us discuss a few points of how we differentiate the bacterial vaginosis from other vaginal infections. Important point to remember is that bacterial vaginosis is non-painful contrasting from vaginitis which is painful. So the non-painful point differentiates the vaginosis from vaginitis which is with pain. Now, why there is no pain or itching or burning in vaginosis? Because in bacterial vaginosis, there is no inflammation, right? Because of presence of no inflammation, there is no burning, no pain, no itching. Okay, 
Another very important point to remember is that the bacterial vaginosis is associated with sexual activity but is not sexually transmitted. It is uh, usually they have a sexual partner, it is associated with sexual activity but is not sexually transmitted. So, because it is not sexually transmitted, the treatment of the partner is not required, which is unlike in trichomoniasis. This table shows the differentiating points between, between bacterial vaginosis and trichomonas vagi uh, vaginalis. So trichomonas vaginalis is a vaginitis. There is presence of inflammation. So there will be presence of itching and burning. While in Gardnerella vaginalis infection uh, that is causing bacterial vaginosis, there is no inflammation so it is non-painful. The uh, infection, uh, the discharge in bacterial vaginosis is thin grey white adherent discharge while in trichomonas vaginalis is a greenish thin discharge. The uh, discharge in bacterial vaginosis has a fishy odor characteristically which increases on addition of potassium hydroxide while a foul smelling odor is present in trichomonas vaginalis. Although the WIF test is positive in trichomonas vaginalis also, that is, there is an increase in the amine odor on addition of potassium hydroxide, but the base vaginal discharge, it's not fishy in odor, it has a foul smell, while the Gardnerella vaginalis bacterial vaginosis has a baseline fishy odor which increases on addition of potassium hydroxide. So both Trichomonas vaginalis and Gardnerella vaginalis, they have a positive whiff test. Fourth point is that there is presence of motile trophozoites on microscopy in case of trichomonas vaginalis while clue cells or uh, the vaginal epithelial cells laden by bacteria are uh, present in case of bacterial vaginosis. Also as I already discussed trichomonas vaginalis is sexually transmitted disease STI and therefore it uh, you have to treat the partner as well while Gardnerella vaginalis is only sexually associated but is not sexually transmitted. Also important point to remember is douching increases the risk of bacterial vaginosis. So sexually associated and douching it increases risk of bacterial vaginosis. Now next coming to the treatment. The first line treatment for bacterial vaginosis is metronidazole. But if the patient it cannot tolerate, she cannot tolerate uh, metronidazole, then clindamycin proves to be a good and reasonable second line treatment. So metronidazole, what's the regime? We give 500 milligram orally twice a day for seven days. That's the basic tablet treatment. If a gel is used, uh, five grams intravaginally is used once a day for five days. The second line treatment is clindamycin cream. Uh, 5 gram applicator cream is intravaginally inserted at bedtime for 7 days. So these are the recommended treatment. First line is metronidazole and second line is clindamycin. Metronidazole is given usually in the tablet form 500 milligrams twice a day for 7 days. Okay, 500 milligrams twice a day for 7 days. This is the ideal treatment. If a gel has to be applied, then it is uh, it is applied once a day for five days, and two percent cream is applied intravaginally at bedtime for seven days. Alternate treatments can be tinidazole, it can be clindamycin, three hundred milligrams twice a day for seven days, tablets or ovules also, which is inserted intravaginally at bedtime for three days. Hundred milligram clindamycin ovules. So this was all about bacterial vaginosis. So I'll be discussing two questions uh, related to the topic here. Uh, starting with question one, a 25 year old woman gravida one para zero at 10 weeks gestation comes to the office due to malodorous vaginal discharge. She is sexually active but no chronic medical conditions, has no medication allergies, vital signs normal, BMI is 26, a little obese. Speculum examination reveals a thin grey discharge that coats, coats the vaginal wall but no erythema or edema present, that is no inflammation is present. Okay, in the vaginal walls or vulva.
There is no cervical or adnexal tenderness. A slime wet mount reveals numerous epithelial cells coated with bacteria, that is the clue cells. Okay, no white blood cells or motile organisms are seen. This rules out trichomoniasis. Which of the following is the best management option for this patient? Because it is clear cut, there is presence of clue cells. So we will apply the AMCEL criteria. AMCEL criteria for bacterial vaginosis. There is presence of a thin grey white vaginal discharge. So this is the first criteria, thin grey white vaginal discharge that, that is adherent to the vaginal walls. Second criteria was that presence of clue cells. So, numerous epithelial cells that is coated with bacteria. That, that is uh, the second thing that is present. And presence of a malodorous vaginal discharge. So, third was the presence of a fishy odor or malodorous vaginal discharge. So, three out of the four uh, AMCEL criteria are being fulfilled. So, it is... Uh, the diagnosis is uh, bacterial vaginosis and the treatment, best treatment is oral metronidazole is the first line treatment. The other options I'll just consider for discussion. Oral azithromycin is not a treatment of bacterial vaginosis, neither is a vaginal douche. Vaginal douching in fact increases the risk of bacterial vaginosis. Topical fluconazole is uh, not the treatment for bacterial vaginosis. It's actually an uh, antifungal treatment usually used for candidate yes is now the last option is very important to rule out that is a delay in the treatment until second trimester you should remember that bacterial vaginosis it should be treated in pregnancy as it increases the risk of pregnancy losses and postpartum endometritis so as soon as it is diagnosed it should be treated and there should be no delay in the treatment until second trimester so the answer to this question is the oral metronidazole the second question is a 23 year old woman comes to the clinic complaining of an offensive smelling vaginal discharge she has tried washing with soap and uh, soap two to three times a day without success and she tells you that she has the same regular sexual partner for the last two years on examination, she looks well. Vaginal examination reveals a fishy odor and a grayish adherent vaginal discharge. Right. So, uh, as you can see, there is an offensive smelling vaginal discharge and has been tried washing. So, there has been presence of douching. And then she has uh, not changed the sexual partner. Has been the same sexual partner for the last two years looks well and has a fishy odor gray adherent vaginal discharge so um, any vaginal discharge which is without pain without pain and the patient looks well that is it rules out vaginitis so trichomonas vaginalis is associated with with pain Neisseria gonorrhea chlamydia trachomatis causes acute cervicitis and causes pain, usually which is postcoital uh, or intracoital. And Candida albicans, it does not uh, produce a, a vaginal discharge which is thin and adherent. It rather produces thick, white, curdy, cottage uh, cheese type of vaginal discharge and douching here it increases the risk of bacterial vaginosis so the answer here is uh, carnella vaginalis causing bacterial vaginosis which causes vaginosis there is no inflammation there is no pain so the patient she looks well so this was all about uh, bacterial vaginosis uh, in the next lecture i'll be discussing trichomonas vaginalis which is a sexually transmitted infection Hope you all liked the lecture. Thank you.